Alright, what's up everybody? It's Miles from Nacho Cheese TV and today I'm going to be showing you um, basically just a general overview of how I spray my stencils. I got a blank canvas right here. I have some stencils behind the camera that I'm going to throw on here. I'm going to spray them. It's actually because a customer asked for this painting. So I'm going to spray it and I'm going to show you guys pretty much the general process of how I do my thing. It's uh, I wouldn't feel comfortable calling it like a full tutorial, but it's gonna be because I'm sure some of you guys are curious as to what goes on behind the scenes and everything. Because all you guys get to see is just me laying down a layer, spraying it in some weird angle that doesn't show all of it because I'm trying to be artistic and cool. This is gonna be kind of like a get to see how it goes down, see how it happens. Hopefully for the people who are trying to make stencils out there, this helps get to a little bit of insight on how you should be doing things. And I'll throw in a little bit of tips and tricks, like probably without even me knowing it, because for me it's kind of like secondhand nature, because I taught myself. So it's like, if someone taught me how to do all this stuff, then I would remember the points that they taught me. But since I just learned through trial and error, it's kind of like you forget what you learned because it just becomes like instilled in you. But anyways, Let's get to painting this. Alright guys, so here are the stencils that I'm about to be spraying. Um, this is kind of an important thing, at least for me. Um, if you don't have like a whole setup, kind of like how I have here. I have the whole booth and then whatever, I got a little tray for canvases and whatever down there. Um, if you don't have a whole setup, it, what you want to have at least, at the very least, is a table for spraying the paint and a table for spraying the spray adhesive. There. This table I use for spraying spray adhesive. And I just put down newspapers occasionally more and more on there so my stencils don't start sticking to the newspaper that has spray adhesive all over it. So I like to have this set up where I have a table for setting or for uh, spraying my spray adhesive because I don't really want to contaminate my area, my paint area with adhesive. It's just the cleaner way to do it and it just keeps things more organized and easier. Trust me, it's a big headache when you're trying to do everything on one table. It's nearly impossible. You really have to separate it. And I actually prefer to have three tables. Actually, I prefer to have four tables. <laughs> I want I like one for spraying, I like one for spraying spray adhesive. I like a surface that will hold my stencils. This surface is big enough to be four surfaces technically because I like one that will hold my wet stencils. After I spray them, I can lay them down on here. And um, then the surface that I can pick my stencils off of, bring them over here, boom, spray adhesive them, bring them onto the canvas, lay them on the canvas, grab my can, and spray it. And then once I get that wet stencil, take the wet stencil off and then put it in the wet pile. So it, it goes around the whole thing and then it comes back there. Yeah. So if you can have three surfaces, it'll help you out a lot. You guys want to see some crazy ass shit? Alright. So here's the stencils I'm about to be spraying. Four layers. And here are some of my other stencils. This is thick. I can't even flip through them because they're like kind of stuck together and everything. But you can pretty much see how many stencils are here. There's just a buttload. Stencils, 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 stencils. I do a fair amount of cutting. And then I'm pretty sure I got some more stencils. And the funny thing is that I actually usually don't save my stencils. These are just the stencils that I chose to save. And these are all pretty much the gun stencils. Because these are the only ones that I'm really spraying over and over again. So I try saving them. But I mean, I have to get rid of them after I spray them about four times or something. So It's just how many stencils I had. Actually, I just took out this trash right here. This, um, this box was filled to the to the very very top full of old stencils and um, newspaper and stuff from things I already sprayed so yeah some crazy shit I want to show you alright guys so here we go with getting our spray adhesive on our first layer so 
Let's see. With this particular spray adhesive, um, the Loctite, what is it? High performance, 200 metal. Um, it's kind of light. Like it doesn't have a lot of tack to it. So you're gonna wanna kinda really get it on there. Or not really, just kinda watch how I do it. And then I should just go over one more time just to ensure it. And then here. Alright, and then before I actually put it down on the canvas, I like to put it on like a flat surface. The side of my paint booth does perfect. And then push it on there. And then just pull it right off. And that removes any of like the super sticky residue. And I can go ahead and just throw it on here now. Push it down. You probably see me do this in the video a lot, but I roll over it with a can so I can find the color. This pushes edges down. If you really want to get it down on there, flip it over. Roll this side. There you go. Okay, so I just sprayed this layer, and what happens is when you don't, what I did is I let the um, spray adhesive sit a little too long, so it kind of dried up and it lost some of its tack, because I had to cut the, the camera, uh, adjust the light, move the camera, and then I started filming. And then through that period of time, it started losing too much tack. I usually spray the, the spray adhesive on there, then I put it right onto the wall, get the residue off, and then just throw it right on the canvas. So it's just, um, it just goes, ha it happens pretty quickly, so. Uh, it never has time to dry up, really. So, <clears throat> while filming this, it had enough time to dry, just a little bit. So what happened was, right here, if you can see that, I got some overspray. And you see how these are nice hard lines, these are what you want. Right there. Stencil lifted up, and they tend to lift up, stencils do on big long flat lines they tend to lift up so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get something flat put it there and then spray to cover the overspray and I'll show you what I'm about to do it's really important that um, you really shake up your cans especially if you're shaking it and you don't hear the ball moving then you have to really shake that shit until the balls freely moving and it mixes up the paint really well. Because what happens is the oil and the paint separate since it's oil based. And so you just got to shake the shit out of that shit. I usually shake it for like a new can. At least a minute. At least a minute straight just shaking it. Um, and then after you have it shaking it up and there's a little bit of paint out of the can. Like you've been using it for a while. You only need to, every time you use it just make sure you shake it. I don't know for 20-30 seconds. Just to make sure the paint's really mixed up. If it's not mixed up, it will come out real watery or oily, actually. And uh, it takes forever to dry, and it does not have the same consistency once it's dry as um, the shaking up paint. So, just gotta make sure I shake this up so it blends in with this paint very nicely. Okay, so now I'm about to do a little bit of patchwork here. So, I got this little folder thing. It's just, I don't know, some school folder I found in the um, supply cabinet. So, it's got nice, rigid edges. I'm about to just, where this line is supposed to be, like that. Okay, it's kind of getting difficult. There. And then I'm just going to be mindful not to spray out that rear sight. So this is nice and shade. I might just cover it up kind of with my thumb. You don't want to put your thumb all the way down on it because then it'll make like a really hard line around your thumb. Just keep your thumb over it so when the spray comes down, it kind of mists around your thumb. If you're going to use your finger to block something out, keep it away. Like especially, also if you're using like paper to mask it over, just keep it kind of far off and it won't make a hard line around it. It'll soften it up. So. 
And also when I spray this, I'm gonna um I'm just gonna mist it. I'm barely gonna put any paint on there. Because I don't want um a darker spot than the rest of this, because it's gotta blend in with the with the rest of the black paint. It'll also look weird. There you go. And I'll do the trick. So I'm gonna let that dry and then it's gonna look perfectly normal. Okay, so I just held this up to my um my lights that are lighting this area and because a little bit of heat radiates off them so I held it up to that and that heated up the paint real quick and since I only sprayed just that little bit just that little amount it dried quicker and it blended in with the background and you couldn't even tell there was ever a mistake there see what I'm saying like you, you literally couldn't tell and see how I kind of covered up that back side so that didn't take any hit. It has just a little bit of mist on it. Let's see if I can get to focus. Come on. I'm trying to see. It just has like a little bit of black on it, but it's fine. So that's how you do a little bit of patchwork on hard edges. Doesn't always work if you have a curvy ass edge and you have mist on it. I mean, um, overspray on it. So that's just one of the instances where that's how you would fix your overspray. So, let's move on. Alright, sometimes people ask me how I line up my layers. If you see right here, see how there's black and then there's gray? So just make sure you can only see gray through the holes that you've cut. So let me line it up. Pretty much just covering all the black up. Because one thing to keep in mind is that every layer that comes next will fit inside the previous layer and if you think about it the first layer I sprayed fit inside the previous layer which was the black canvas so it fits inside the black canvas layer 2 will fit inside layer 1 layer 3 will fit inside layer 2 so let's spray this and take note on like how much I spray on this pencil because I know some of you new guys when you go to spray, you kind of just wet the shit out of it, and that really is bad because paint will seep underneath, and you'll have kind of like jagged, jagged lines around these edges, which should be really hard edges. So, just the bare minimum. There you go. See, perfect. Alright, sometimes you guys ask me how long it takes to dry. All I did was zoom out when I cut that clip. I just zoomed out and then pressed record again. So, this is just after spraying that layer. I'm just going to hold this up to the light. Let me show you. Just going to hold this up to the light right here. And okay, and this is what I want to tell you guys. Use satin or flat. I actually use primers because primers are extremely flat and what I'm talking about is like you'll see uh, paints when you buy them it'll say something like gloss on them avoid gloss at all costs remember that avoid gloss at all costs alright gloss will fuck you up because gloss when it dries it still looks wet because it's shiny so when you're using satin you will know when it's dry because it will be dull. And right now, you saw how long that took. This is dry. So you spray just that little bit, and it will dry super fast, especially if it's satin or flat. Flat, preferably. If you can't find the color you want in flat, get it in satin. You have to be really desperate to have that color to get it in gloss. Remember, avoid gloss at all costs. Okay, hopefully this angle will illustrate pretty much how much paint you don't have to use. I'm just trying to show you how much I'm actually spraying on. Because, I mean, I don't want to make it sound like you spray nothing. But I remember when I started off, I was real heavy with the paint for some reason. 
I think it's just kind of like a natural instinct or something, but I was real heavy with the paint. And now I've learned less is definitely more. You'll, you'll look in your stencil and you'll spray, and you'll be like, oh, it looks kind of blotchy. Like, you can kind of, kind of almost see the color from before underneath it. But take that stencil off and you'll realize, oh, shit, it's actually pretty much perfect. So... You really don't have to be layering that stuff on there because if you layer the paint on there You're just doing more damage than actually making it look better. So Aim for less aim for less The thing is, you're trying to get it as least wet as possible. There we go. So hopefully you guys kind of saw that. Okay, I specifically wanted to choose this painting to film as well. Because it's a really good example of the island layer. Because you're saying, what the fuck is this all about? There's... <laughs> No trigger, it's just black. And a lot of people who have been trying to stencil have noticed, oh shit, when I cut out my... If you're doing, um, like have the black silhouette, if you notice these ones don't have the black silhouettes because it's just blended with the background. So if your layer one is the black silhouette and then your layer two is your darkest gray, what you notice is on your layer two, for me it's layer one for this, but uh, for you guys it's normally going to be your layer two, um, you realize that you're cutting out parts that we would that we call islands and you're wondering okay how am I supposed to get this island connected if I'm supposed to cut out this outer edge and then it can't be you know connected <laughs> anyways what you do is you put all those in Photoshop you select them all and you make a separate layer and what it is is it looks like this and it's just all those black little islands that uh, got cut out with layer 2. Just throw your layer island layer on there and then spray that and uh, it'll make it complete and it'll put all those islands that you have definitely probably been stressing out about right there and it's easy. Remember always spray this layer last always spray this layer the same color as layer 1 and for me, layer one is technically the background because it's my darkest layer. Or it's my darkest color on here. And to line this one up, it's kind of different because you'll probably see different colors through your little windows, as I hastily named them earlier. Um, but you kind of line it up to the shapes. You'll see shapes and they'll consistently fit inside your windows and then you'll just realize, right, that's where it lines up perfectly, where the shapes are consistent. Or where the shapes are most consistent, because you'll see sometimes, like, there's white shining through right there, and gray in the same window, so that's just how it is sometimes. I wish I could explain that further, but it's, I don't know. <sighs> I'm not a genius at this. Make sure this is on there pretty decently. Fuck, I keep doing that. To avoid doing what I just did, instead of lifting straight up, I'm doing it because I'm on camera and I'm acting like an idiot, but um, what you do is you slide the canvas and that breaks any um, adhesion that formed from, I don't know, from wet paint on here or just any glue from the, your surface to your stencil. Turn it and then go ahead and lift it up and you'll be fine. Make sure that all these are down. Let's spray it. There you go. And also, if you guys noticed, 
right here, when I finished doing layer 3, I got a little bit of overspray. So, I'm going to touch that up. <laughs> it's weird, when I'm doing this video, of course all the mistakes happen. I make these paintings all the time, and I <laughs> always do it without making any mistakes, but I think it's good that I'm making the mistakes now, because then it shows you guys how to deal with the mistakes as well. There you go. And that's just a quick way to do that. Got it away. Good enough. I'm going to let this one dry out. I'll show you what it looks like. Alright, so here she is. All finished up. I'm going to see it nice and detailed if you want. There you go. It looks pretty good. No complaints, really. Uh, there's a little bit of overspray right there. But that's so insignificant that if you're looking at from here, it's not like you even notice that, really. With the exposure kicking. There you go. See, it's like you don't really even notice that, so I'm not even going to worry about that. <laughs> I'm actually not a perfectionist, believe it or not. Even though I am an artist. Maybe a decent artist, I'm not sure about that yet. But, yeah. Hopefully this guy, is, this has cleared up some of the questions you guys have been asking. But if you have any more questions, always, always, always feel free to ask them in the comments or send me a personal message. Um, I actually really enjoy commenting back, so <laughs> feel free to go ahead and shoot away. I just had a long YouTube conversation in the comments with uh, one of my subscribers. Name is... Mind a ramble, mind a ramblin', I believe. And um, he asked me about four or five questions, and I think I covered all the questions he asked in this video because I thought, like, all right, shit, I just gave this guy a bunch of answers, and I feel bad for all the people who have been patiently waiting for the tutorials to get those questions answered. So here's a basic overview, just so everyone's up to the same speed. And um, yeah. So, here's the last little look at her, and hope you guys learned something, feel free to ask me questions.